Before you listen to the podcast, I want to ask for your input. Chagas have launched a survey to help identify the impacts of the very wet autumn. The loss of winter crop area will be compounded by a lack of seed for spring cereals, which may lead to unsown land on many farms in 2024. Chagas are asking all tillage farmers to participate in the survey to tell us how much land which was destined for spring crops is still unsown and your intentions for this area in 2024. The link to the survey is in the show notes. Cultural risk factors always as well. So crop rotation monocultures are bad, multiple crops are good, spring sown crops, include them in the rotation because they are very valuable. Cultivation systems, just doing a monoculture, you've got to swap it about a bit. Grass weeds are a problem on almost all farms in Ireland. Winter oats, annual meadow grass and bromes are the most common, but other weeds such as Italian ryegrass, canary grass and black grass are all too common. Even though you might have heard about these weeds, the scale of the increase on farms and the measures necessary to control them is less well known. But firstly, could you identify these weeds on your farm? You're listening to the latest episode of The Tillage Edge with me, Michael Hennessy. We'd really appreciate it if you could listen, follow and give us a review on Apple or Spotify or wherever you get your podcast from. Black grass is in every county in the country and I would not be surprised if it's in your immediate locality. Majority of farms do not have black grass on their farms and it can be relatively easy to keep it out, but this takes vigilance. To get a better insight into the topic, it's worth listening back to Dr. Sarah Cook from ADAS in the UK who gave an excellent talk at the ECT Grassweed Conference in November about blackgrass and how to eliminate it from farms. What would you say is how much blackgrass is too much? You know, you find that in the UK, people live with it. You know, it's sort of like a thing that you you live with. Um, But really, your level should be zero. You shouldn't let it get out of hand. And why is that? Yield losses can be really high, so 100 heads per metre squared, you can get about a 13% yield loss. And it can vary. It can vary over in fields and and with varieties. Um, 500 heads, you can get virtually lose half of your crop. But you won't know that because you've got no control. You've got no untreated control next to it. So seed production like to go into a field, you put your feet at right angles and you look and count black grass plants between your feet. And that's about a tenth of a metre squared. So you can multiply that by 10 and get a figure per metre squared. So one plant per metre squared is 10 heads per metre squared. And each of those heads has about 100 seeds on it. If the black grass has got plenty of room to grow in an uncompetitive crop, you can get five or ten times as much as that on on he- number of heads. You get a, th- a thousand seeds per meter squared, 60% viability, gives you six million seeds per hectare or two and a half million pounds per acre. But, you know, that's a lot of seeds. So your population can go from a very small population to a very massive population within one, two, three years quite easily if you don't do anything about it. And what does that look like? So 500 seeds, uh, heads per meat squared for harvest is about 1.2 pints or just under half a litre of black grass. But that's four tonne bags going back into your fields per hectare. That's what the equivalent is. And that's more than you would ever sow of winter wheat. So we're looking at IWM or integrated weed management, integrated pest management it's, it's a big thing in the EU at the minute, and it's basically trying to control weeds without pesticides, but using pesticides or herbicides as your last resort. So they are there at the end waiting, and you're bringing to them a very low population of the weed. So understanding the, your enemy, exploiting its weaknesses. So understanding the weed biology, and we've talked about this, we, we know about weeds, and black grass is one we know a lot about. We know a lot about the biology of black grass. And then stubble management. So we've talked about this, whether you should roll, cultivate, or leave stubble after harvest. And then we talk about stale seed beds, making a seed bed so that the, the weeds germinate and we can spray them off with glyphosate. 
So do we bury the seed or do we let the seed emerge? And then there's our crop. The crop's really important. We talked about rotation and rotation is important. Rotation allows us to use different herbicides in different crops. We can use different cultivations, different drilling dates. Um, we can minimise weed emergence and we can make a competitive crop. And I'd say to you that what's one of the most important things is a competitive crop. So getting the crop in in good conditions and getting a competitive crop is incredibly important. Bear patches, weeds make the most of bear patches, block cultures, whatever you, you want. You give them the space and they'll take a mile. And then the pre-harvest option. So what can you do pre-harvest? You can just burn it all out with glyphosate, which is quite typical if you've been to cereals in the UK. You'll see the fields that are half gone because we just burnt out the black grass. My question to you is, why are you leaving it so late? You can see the black grass in the autumn. Why don't you get rid of it then before you've given it nitrogen, fungicides, whatever? Why burn it? Why, why wait till June? And then there's the, the new techniques that are coming in, minimising seed return with harvest weed seed control. So black grass, what are its weaknesses? What are its strengths? 80% of it comes up in the autumn. That's a weakness. Although John has told us now that the English black grass has now started coming up this spring as well. 70% seed decline over the year. So we know that within five years we can get rid of it in the seed bank. And it can't germinate from depth, so if you bury it deep it won't germinate. Its strengths are contamination. We talked about that. It's in seed, it's on your machines, it's in your balers, it's in your combines. High seed production. It loves wet conditions. Really wet, loves it, doesn't care. Your, your crop will fail, black grass will carry on. And then spring emerges, they do set seed. And if you've got a very poor crop and you harvest it, black grass will continue to grow in the stubble and set seed before you kill it off before your next crop. So there we are, 80% emerging in the autumn. So we can delay drilling. But cultural control, it's quite difficult to work. It can give you very variable results. It's not the answer to everything. You will always get some coming through because when you're tackling a, a 10 hectare field with, with a plough or a cultivator, you're not going to get all the soil work to an even depth. Influenced by weather conditions and this autumn, has been appalling. And I don't really want to suggest to you that you do late drilling because I think, you know, you, you'll beat me to death. Cultivations, associated costs. It's expensive, it's time consuming. We've talked about ploughing, but ploughing is very valuable. Once you've got a low product, uh, population, you can reduce the pressure on the herbicides, you get a better percentage control, you get fewer survivors. With the, with the herbicides, because it's just a numbers game, really. And then you're more lucky than some of the people in the east of England. You can return the field to grassland. A minimum of two years, but as long as you want. But you've got to mow or tightly graze that grassland so that the black grass does not set seed again. So you've got to stop it returning seed, because it will. <coughs> So this is a paper where they looked at a load of cultural techniques. This is sort of the only really information that we have. We've not really gone on to do additional work on controlling black grass with cultural methods. We've done a bit on spring, spring and a bit on um, cover crops. So ploughing, it gives us an average of 69% control of black grass, but it's variable. We know what ploughing is like. Um, it can be great or it can be rubbish. Depends on the conditions, depends on the ploughman. It's a technique, it's really important to get good ploughing. Delaying drilling, the weather. Higher seed rates, they do give you a little bit of control, so you get a more competitive crop, and you will have to up your seed rate if you drill late. Competitive cultivars, so we don't really look at varieties for their competitiveness, but I mean, changing from wheat to barley, that's a more competitive crop. But I wouldn't grow winter oats because they've absolutely failed. There's no herbicide you can use in them. I just They're supposed to be competitive, but they're not really. Spring cropping, that's the way the English have gone. Loads more spring cropping, mainly because they were forced with their arms up the back because they couldn't get stuff in in the autumn. And the, but they have learnt begrudgingly 
to grow spring crops to control blackgrass. And then following as well with um, the uh, environmental stewardship type things, more people have gone into following. But I've seen some atrocious following, full of blackgrass, took it out after two years, and the field was worse than when he started. So there's something to be learnt there. So we're looking at the seed bank. So this is the soil, basically the soil profile. So weeds generally come up from the top five centimetres or two inches. And then when you cultivate, you're stirring up this seed bank. So fresh seed is falling on the top. And you've got old seed in the bottom, up to sort of five, six years old. Germination is generally stimulated by cultivations, a flash of light, oxygen, change of temperature. But seeds on the surface are killed by insects, mice, birds, and then killed by sunshine and frost. And then some of the seed that's freshly shed becomes dormant and some dies. But black grass can emerge. Most of it comes from the top layers. But when you get below sort of six inches, six centimetres or two and a half inches, yeah, emergence really stops. So cultivations that give you uneven emergence, and that's probably what you don't need when you're using a pre-emergence herbicide. You want the seed to come from a, a tight layer at the top, the, the layer that's affected by the herbicide. You don't want it coming up from underneath because then it's not affected by the herbicide. So keeping those cultivations nice and even and tight. So with ploughing, this year's seed goes onto the top and you've got seeds in the seed bank. So with ploughing, you generally put the new seed at the bottom and you bring the old seed to the top. So you can see the problems there. If you haven't ploughed for five years, then you won't have any old seed at the bottom. So you'll have a nice clean top. But you ploughing every year, you're just moving it round, you're bringing it back up, going down, back up, going down. So ploughing is great, reduces the weed pressure, you don't have to do it every year. As a one-off, it, it, it doesn't affect your organic matter, it doesn't affect your structure. Just as a one-off, resetting the system when you've got a high number, it's fine. Deep tilling, now this is the worst one. So you're deep tilling 10, 15 centimetres. You're just churning that soil up, you're spreading the seed through the depth of cultivation. Um, some new seed is buried, but basically you're just moving it around and it's coming up from different depths. So deep tilling is not, not the best way. So this is ploughing compared with non-inversion. You can see that ploughing is a, a lot cleaner, non-inversion. But I mean, it depends what you want. If you're going to spray off that non-inversion with glyphosate, then that's what you need. With the ploughing, you would spray it off. So you always would kill before you drill. This is shallow tillage, so you're keeping that seed within that top layer. You know where that seed is, you're keeping it in there, and you can control it. You'll know when it comes up, and you'll be able to control it with a pre-emergence herbicide. With no-till, you're keeping that soil on the top, the, the seed on the top, and so you know where it is, and you'll be able to deal with it. So this is the option, you, you can keep it on for top from years, but if it gets too much, you can just plough it and then reset because you won't have many seeds underneath to bring up. So it keeps these weeds in the emergent zone. But as John mentioned, no, I think no-till, direct drilling, you buy one machine, you change your thing, you've got to be flexible, you've got to have that flexibility. You, I think you can't just set on one of these methods. You've got to be flexible and you've got to be prepared to change your cultivations. Because with no-till direct drilling, brome loves, loves that. As Michael mentioned, we, we suffered that before. That germinates on the, the surface. Um, biennials, perennials, tap roots, Bercherville, things like that. And if you're not killing those um, tap roots, then it can cause issues and you may want to reset it. So just in summary, ploughing is good, deep tilling is probably the worst, shallow tilling is okay, and no till is good. So, 1st of June, first week of June is a, 
a date you should have in your mind. That's when you should kill off blackgrass. If you've got any blackgrass in your fields, you should be roguing it out and you should be removing it from the field. The 1st of June is basically the week that blackgrass starts to set seed in its head. So if you leave it in the field, you run the risk of it germinating. It's like wild oats. You would always take them from the field because they are fertile as soon as they appear. So spraying out patches, this is done with a hand sprayer, but you can do it with the 24 metres tractor, 36 metre, take out half the field, it doesn't really matter. But the first week of June really is the, the sort of last date that you can use it. And then roguing, this isn't fun at all. It's all right, wild oats, they're quite big and hefty and you can take them out, but looking for black grass is quite difficult. But it's well worth it if you want to go that way to getting rid of it. But then you've got to watch hygiene. So you don't want to be bringing um, new seeds onto the farm in balers, in combines, in seed, in um, whatever, whatever. You don't want to bring it back on. So you've got to watch that. So hygiene is really key. So we can use herbicides, that's fine. But we've got to make sure they work optimally. Fine seed beds, no large clods. Pre-emergences always go on between 24 to 48 hours of drilling because we need to get those weeds as they germinate. Then we'd usually put on a peri-emergence and then a post-emergence in the autumn. But that's gone out of favour because our black wrist is resistant to them all, basically. Using the correct boom height, using reduced speed, using good coverage and watching your, um, the amount of water you use. So we have risk factors, which we look at. So um, high risk factors are three or more grass weed herbicides per year. Pops and dims. Vijay's just talked about this. These are the sort of key ones, the, the ALS herbicides used every year. And then, but always use a pre-emergence herbicide. And then learn from us what we're going to do after, because they don't work anymore. But we're working on that. Cultural risk factors always as well. So crop rotation, monocultures are bad. M multiple crops are good. Spring sown crops, include them in the rotation because they are very valuable. Cultivation systems, just in a monoculture, you've got to swap it about a bit. Drilling date, uh, high seed rates, competitive colours, uh, cultivars and fallow, just use loads and keep those weed levels low, because the fewer weeds you have, the less um, problems you can have with multiplication and, and bringing out a resistance. So in summary, plan your weed control across the whole rotation. It's not just about the wheat, it's not just, it's, so you plan it across the whole rotation. You can use different herbicides and different cultivations, drilling dates throughout the rotation. Keep your weed populations low. Decide on what cultivations you're going to use and plan your drilling date. Kill before you drill using glyphosate and then plan your herbicide strategy. And, and then preferably don't let the weeds set seed. But if you haven't got two weeds in the first place, that's not going to be a problem. Thank you. A huge thanks to Sarah for her contribution to the conference. You can also see the presentations by Sarah on the Chargus Crops YouTube channel. I want to wish you and your family a happy and safe Christmas and we'll be back in 2024 or next Thursday when I will chat to Kieran Collins and Shay Phelan about the prospects for the tillage industry in 2024. So finally, don't forget if you enjoyed the podcast and recommend it to a friend or colleague. And as always, rate, review and follow on Apple or Spotify so you never miss an episode. And for more information, go to chargus.ie. I'm Michael Hennessy. Thanks for listening. I'll be back next week with more tillage news and advice. Before I sign off, another gentle reminder to please fill out the survey. The details are in the show notes.